Drag Boss's Racing C4 sub assembly setup. All right, guys, so a couple things to tell you. If you're gonna build up transmissions, don't wear good clothes, because once you get tranny fluid on it, it never washes out. That's an aside. But um, a couple things. You know, I had talked to Paul at Amanis, and one of the issues that C4s have is pump pressure, the main line pressure. For them to survive, you need, I guess a minimum I'd say is 220 PSI. I thought I had like close to 240 on this when I measured it one time back at 06, but I don't remember. I didn't see it written down in any of my books. But Paul was saying that his put out about 250 PSI with his valve bodies. So that's something you gotta keep in mind when you're building a transmission for racing and high performance. So a couple things, I always get a container which you can't see here, but I'll just show you. A little plastic container with regular transmission fluid in it. I like to soak the clutches in it before I put them all together, check the clearances. I just use regular Type F. Never used any of the high performance transmission fluids. Didn't think that I needed them. I heard bad things about them, so I never bothered with it. So what I'm gonna do now, and since I tore that apart and found that the direct had wear in them, and that's probably why the clearances are a lot more than they should be, you know, and Paul was talking to me. He said, you know what, try to stick with, for the uh, direct, try to do 45 thousandths, and then with the forward, do 25 thousandths. So I'm going to change that, because previously, if you look through the video, I had higher numbers, uh, 35 for forward and 50 to 55 for the direct. But I got the direct drum here, and what I did to change these clutch pistons because they're hard, I don't want to do them. I always worry about them leaking after I change them or the seal rips putting them together. But this is under spring tension, so you got to be careful with this. And what I did is I made this tool a long time ago. It's nothing but a piece of little angle iron I got from, I don't know, Menards or something. And then I countersunk a little bit of a hole in there to fit in the chuck of the drill press. And then I took two bolts, ground them down so I could fit and compress this area right here. And I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can so that I can take the snap ring out and then the spring will come up. So that's my plan. So I haven't done this in a while. Let's see how it works. Where's my snap ring pliers right here. And you want to get it centered on the part that has the spring and you want it perfectly level because you got some pressure. They, they have one that's got three ears that you can buy. I never had it, I used this. And I just gotta be super cautious because I don't wanna have a problem. And you got to make sure you rotate the drum so you can get the damn snap ring out of there too. So that looks pretty good. Let's just see how it goes down. So it goes down and then what I do is I adjust this thing up to hold it. Then I use my snap ring pliers. take the snap ring out, and then cautiously lift it back up. That's why I had to grind those bolts. I'm gonna have to lower the table a little bit. There it is. You have to grind these so you can get the snap ring out of there. And then I'll show you the drum. And there's the big spring that you're compressing, so you gotta watch out for that.
And then the clutch piston is right here. Sometimes they'll twist right out of there. There it is. And there's a ring here. You can see it on the outside. And then there's two rings on the inside. Right here and right here. I'll get you a better picture when I move the camera back. But there doesn't look like there's a lot of debris in there. That's a good thing. Doesn't look like it got hot. Another good thing. So let's keep going. All right, so a little bit different camera angle. It's always hard to get the right camera angle. Um, one of the things that Paul said is make sure that no one ever took that check ball out of there. Kind of see it right there. Leave that in there, he said. Sometimes they do that to get the pressures up. So definitely get an O-ring pick to get these things loose, get them off. And then you peel it off. And then you basically match it up to what you have in your kit and replace it. So that's that one there. That was wrong. There's only one O-ring. It's at the bottom. I thought there was one there. It's just a groove. So one thing I'll tell you, to try to find C4 parts is pretty difficult. You're not going to find them around your hometown, I bet. I just called somebody that Paul had gave me a, a name in Michigan that may have them. So hopefully I can hook up with him. And then there's this one here. So now that that's out, what I want to do is see if there's any debris. I got to wash it out. And I'll tell you what works the best, brake parts cleaner. So let me go clean this all up, find the gaskets or the O-ring seals, and then we'll get it back together. Check the clearances on it. Well, that's good. I just got a call from Bob, who's in Norwalk, Ohio who just called me back about the Teflon ceiling rings, low reverse piston, Sonics, uh, intermediate servo. So I might get some of them while I can get them. But I got the drums all cleaned up. Now, if you got a tranny that, that got fried, what you got to pay attention to is getting debris that's inside there. I can't really show you a good picture. But yeah, it gets caught in these fins or these areas. You got to make sure you clean that out. Otherwise, if the clutches get stuck in there, they get debris in there. You don't want any of that going on. In fact, I see something I want to make sure that's not bad. Yeah, but just a spot. So how they make get six clutches in here, because I think normally they're four, and then I went to five, and then I went to six as I progressed. But they use different size steels, and then the bottom spacer that kind of looks like this. They can machine these to be thinner, and that's how you get your clearances. They also, what they do is they machine a second snap ring groove in here. I'm not really good at showing you the stuff on the camera, but you can see it here. There's one here, probably from the factory, or at least for the five, and then there's one up here for the six. That's how they get the, the clearances in there. So make sure you clean your drum up really well. I matched up the seals. Now I know why I have so many different kits is because I use the seals out of it. The rest you don't need for this transmission. So let's install them. The first one we want to put in is going to be for the drum itself. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. And you kind of match them up to get the right. You just put a little bit of training fluid on them. You don't want to tear them going on. And then you kind of just fit it down over that area. And just kind of go around it and massage it in there. You kind of got to flip it up and kind of push it down and just work it around. Because when it sticks up, you can grab it with your finger, spin it up, and then push the side of the O-ring down. That's why I don't like doing these. You don't want to tear it. 
and then you're screwed. Make sure you use plenty of lube on that. And then you can see, you can feel it going right around there. It feels good. Like I said, you want that you want that thing being square in there. It's a square cut seal. You want it fitting in there nice. And I like the, the whole drum with some tranny fluid in it. Not too much. I don't need it dripping all over, but I don't like stuff going together dry. You never want it to be dry in there, especially the clutch packs. That's why I keep it soaking when I be brand new ones. I let them soak in the transmission fluid. So then the next thing is this clutch piston here. So it's this guy right here. Kind of just put it around. See what I mean by square cut? You get it. Now I try not to stretch it too much, but you're going to have to a little bit to get it to fit on there. There. Now, remember that seal is going to seal against here, the one you put in the drum. So you want to make sure that's got good lubrication on it when you push it in there. It doesn't dry fit and tear the damn thing. Like I said, I like the whole, this part here, I want nice and lubed in the drum itself. So that slides right in and there ain't no monkey business. Otherwise, you tear the seal, then you don't know. You could air check it, but sometimes you might have an issue and not even know it. And then you kind of rotate it around, putting it in. Kind of just try to do it equal to get it to go down flat. Kind of look around the sides too and make sure that it looks even. You'll know when you go to put the discs in, clutch discs, the frictions that it ain't going to fit right. And I can tell, it ain't, it, I don't think it's down there all the way. There it goes. And you kind of want to pull it when you push down so it doesn't pinch it. Kind of like push the center. There. Yeah, that's better. So what I'm saying is you want to pull this part this way to give it room for that seal to fit and then you gotta push down on the piston and kind of rotate it around. That's how my little trick that I've done with it. And that should be able to spin, which it can spin. It's hard to grab that little bastard, but it spins. And if it spins, then it ain't, then it's lined up pretty damn good. All right, guys, I got the piston in the drum for the direct, and I think it's fine. Next, I'm going to do, I put the, I already set this up because it takes a little finagling to get it perfect. But basically, I got that tool I made to push down on the spring retainer, so it pushes it down, and then I can put the snap ring in. You know, you always got to be cautious working the springs. I don't want that thing to slip and slide, bam, come out of here. So you got to be cautious and make sure it's centered and perfect. So when the spring's going down, it's going down centered. And you know that by when you push it down, it goes right down. That's about all I can do. So I put my little adjustment up to hold it. We're cautious. We're quick.
down a little bit too far, but let's just be careful. Nice. Like I said, you gotta be careful, take your time. That's how you get the tool out. Yeah, that's nice. And that's it. I always like to make sure things are seated before I go looking at it. But I can see that the snap rings all the way down. And you can see it there. So now, now what we'll do is we'll set up the clearances for the drum, the direct drum, which you want to be 45, he was saying. So let's get stuff picked up. So I'll show you this tool that I made. Basically, it's a piece of rectangle tubing. I think I said angle iron before. And I just drilled holes in it and made a little countersunk area to fit into the chuck of the drill press. And then the bolts I had to kind of grind down halfway so that you can get the snap ring down inside there to fit. So it really needs to have the third arm, like the ones that they have that are made for that job. But I used what I could. It'll be there for the next time. All right, yeah, so you saw that uh, spring go in there, and it's kind of a little bit precarious. So the, like I said, these are six clutch directs. So that's a thicker plate that goes against the piston itself. So let's see what we have. What do we say? 45 thousandths is what we want. I remember those are brand new. I got a phone call. I was going to put some new frictions in here, and I still might, but at least I'm going to keep going. That's, I better count. Two, three, four, five. And there's number six. But the guy called me. He said, listen, I don't got your stuff. It didn't come in. A few things are missing. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to keep going. You know, I'll see how I feel. If I get this done and I want to keep going, I will. If not, I'll wait for the, the parts. I mean, those frictions look good. It's not like they're totally worn out. So I got that in there. Now let's put this in. Snap ring. You hear that snap, so you know it's in there. And then we said we wanted 45, so that's 20 and 25. Let's see how that fits. Yeah, that ain't going in there, so it's tight. It's too tight. So I got these steels that I have, a different assortment. You know, they're mostly, I think they said they're usually 78, but I don't know, I measure them. They're just like other things you find. They're not always the same. And I think they actually had cut these down or ground them down to make them be a little bit thinner. So, so I got a bunch of steels. We'll see how they how they fit. But a couple of them I cleaned up with the drag boss unidirectional finish. Kind of see. That was a little trick that I thought worked to make them a little bit more rough rather than the shiny surface. So let's just see what this measures. That's like 77. I see, I know they're thin. Look at that. That one's like, that's like 58, 59. So let's try that. a little bit looser 45 
I'm gonna use these angled feeler gauges just because they fit in there a lot easier. That fits. Tight, but fits. Okay, you know what? I'm going with it. Now the question is, if I got the steels or the, the frictions, the new ones, I replaced those three, is it gonna be even tighter? So it, it may be. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's basically the clearances there. I'll take that 45. I'd rather be lucky than good. Otherwise, you have to take things apart and then you can go through your assortment of steels if you have it and try to find the right thicknesses. You know, like I said, they have standardized steels like 94s and then most of them are 78. But I'm telling you, I go through whether it's they're worn or the parts I have and measure them. They never seem to measure exactly what they say. It say 78 thousandths. I have some that say 70. Seven, I had 74, 76. So you kind of just trial and fit, keep going back and forth and measuring that clearance till you get what you need. It's a lot of work, but it's the little things that make the difference. And I think what I'm gonna do is make this, a, I'm gonna make this a separate video because the first one was like 54 or 55 minutes. It's long and it's just the tear down of how I do it. And what I'll do is I think I'll put this as just doing the sub assemblies so people can just refer to that if they want to just do the clutch replacements um, and pistons. And then I'll do another video on the reassembly of how I do it and measure the clearances. So I'm also going to make another video of basically the modifications that I made to this. I didn't mention before, but this has a rollerized number nine uh, bearing where the thrust washer was. I may have mentioned it. And I may not have, that's why I'm saying it now, is this has the uh, modified number nine thrust washer that's now a needle bearing that I got from Jay Broder, from Broder Performance. So basically you can see here, it replaces a regular thrust washer with that nice roller bearing. And the other thing is, what I think I'm gonna do with that other video of, of some of the specs I did to this case, because I didn't mention all the case modifications that I made with Drilling, I know Andy had mentioned that in his about drilling a number nine for better oil flow. I can't remember what else I did, but I got that from the big C4 thread. I'm gonna try to get a copy and take pictures of it. I know I have it somewhere. It might even be still on the net, but that's what I went by to modify my case. I went through the changes that they said to, to drill and it's held up and done just what I needed to all this time. Now on to the forward drum. Let's change the piston seals and set up the clutches. Now, the one thing that I saw on Andy's, he doesn't have, he has a thrust washer here. Mine's been welded and I have the roller bearing in there. So I like that option. Well, let's take a peek at this. We're gonna pull this all apart. And these frictions were all nice and the steels were all good. So we're gonna reuse that pack and remeasure it. So let's put that snap ring with that. And then we have to get this bell bell spirit out. And like I said, it's, it's held in by a snap ring right there. So let's put this bearing with that so we don't lose it. Try to get that snap ring out of there. They fit tight, there's no doubt about it. Sometimes in smaller screwdrivers, it's better. Like this little guy. I'll tell you, I've had these snap-on screwdrivers for a long time, man. Probably since the 80s when I worked at the transmission shop, somewhere around that period of time. That's the Belleville spring. And then this has like a little steel support ring. 
it sits on there. And then this is the same way. The piston's got to kind of be spun out of there. One of the things I'll tell you, though, while we're talking is that the Direct had huge holes, like 3 eighths in diameter in the past to help exhaust. And Paul is saying that's just way too big. So I do have a couple of those drums. I got that from Performance Automatic back in the day. They had these holes in it, too, that do the same thing. So it's just a matter of me getting that piston out of there. There it is. You just got to kind of rotate it and lift up. Rotate and lift up. There. And then there's that lip seal. Or O-ring, I should say. Square cut seal. Let's get it right. And then this one also has one. Down in here. Pull that out. You saw that. There again, I like to set it down because I'm going to clean everything up and match them up. I can't remember if this is a round seal or a square cut. It's round. Same thing. So I'll match them up, clean up these drums, and we'll put it back together and then measure the clutch clearances. Not much debris in it. I still brake clean everything and make it nice. I want to have a good setup when I'm putting them back together. All right, so it's an O-ring or a round ring, like I said. I matched them up from the kit, and uh, let's put them together. I like to keep these separate. I'll put them in a bag and put the date that I did it so I know, and I'm keeping a good track of everything now. So, And this has a little check ball in it, too. So make sure that thing's free. So this has that O-ring. We'll lube it up. We'll put this inside. There again, be gentle when you're putting it on there. You don't want to tear it. And I use my little O-ring tool. Kind of put it around the hub. Help me stretch it out and work it right around. Push it right down. Or you slide it around in a circle. why they're there not just to get them out but to help you facilitate putting them on and you can see that's in there I hope right there I don't know if you can see it but it's right there and then we'll get the one on the clutch same thing with this kind of wipe it around Put it on the piston. Make sure it goes in there. I just work it around nice and easy. Then I go around it to make sure that it's in there and flat. And hopefully we can get this right back in there. But they don't go in as easy as you think. They have to, you gotta work them a little bit. Gotta do a little at a time to kind of make it square. Kind of hear it going down. And when it's down, it should be flush. And I like to make, let's take a screwdriver and just push down 
make sure it's seated all the way around. That's all she wrote. So that looks pretty good. I can see now that it's down far as far as it's going to go. So we take the little, I don't know what this thing's called, round thing, little tiny snap ring, but it doesn't really snap on anything. It just sits on that, which allows and it goes against the Belleville spring. So let's make sure that's clean. Like I said, sometimes if you got too much clearance, this thing will pop up, lose pressure. So you make sure that thing's seated in there all right. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can see right here, there's a gap, there's an edge. Right here, there's a little snap ring edge, ledge, and that's where the snap ring goes. So you know the piston's in far enough when the Belleville plate goes down far enough and you get the snap ring in. Otherwise, you're fighting it and it's, you're going to have an issue. You don't need any issues doing this. And so it's a spring, so it's going to have tension. And you make sure that it's snapped and it's all the way around. That snap ring, you want to make sure it's all seated all the way around here. Pushed back against the drum. And I just use my fingers and yep, it looks pretty good. And make sure that the Belleville Springs not, these tangs here bend. So you want to make sure they're all touched against that little round ring, that retaining type ring, or I don't know what kind of ring it is. Then, we don't need the bearing in it right now, but let's go ahead and see what we have for fit. So this kind of has a rounded bottom that goes against that Belleville spring. And this again is a six clutch forward. These are smooth frictions. They look brand new. One, Steel, two, steel, three, steel, four, steel, five, steel, six, and then the Y, the bigger. It's a steel, but it's a bigger spacer. Now remember, in this one, we're trying to shoot for 25 on the forward. Nice. Then make sure it's seated. And then our 25, which was here. Let's see, pretty good. It's a little loose for me. Now that could be some wear on either the steels or the frictions, although they didn't look that bad. But we can try a different steel here and see if it works comparatively. Because that's really 25, that's 35. Let's see if 35 works. Yeah, see, that's 35. So, would I work? Yeah, I've done it lots of times. But I'm trying to kind of go through the specs that Paul Adamanis was talking about. So we'll take this big guy off. And then let's just see how, how big these steels are. Cuz 
and I think they must custom make these to get them to fit. 74. About 74. So let's leave that there. We got a 77 right here. That says 79. 78. Let's measure this one. About the same. Try this one. Put the back. Put it back on. Drum. Spacer. Twenty-five. Nice. That's actually better. It's a little loose. I mean, if I can't fix it, I'm going to send it. Let's just see what 35 looks like. I can't get 35 in there. Let's see. 27. It's probably a 27. So let's the 25 there let's take it back apart let's see if we can get it closer sugar i don't want them all out of there thank you so let's see this is the original one we had this is what we just tried. Put it on top of that. They say they're only like, I think they say 78, but you measure them and they're different. And that's a 94. 93 it says it's 94 though. I think that's going to be too much. Twenty-five. That's the one, baby. It's a tight twenty-five, but it fits. What other than the other one that was loose? So twenty-five. I don't know if you can see that. And then so you can see how it fits. You have to push a little bit, but I'm going to say it's good. So the drums are set up. We're good with that. Let's make sure we don't miss anything. Put the bearing back. I'll lube everything up before I put it back together. But as far as that goes, the subs are done. I'll see what parts I get tomorrow from Norwalk, from that Bob. See what he's got to offer. I still like to keep everything in order. And what I ordered was a Sonics Intermediate Servo. I don't know if I'm even going to use it, but I bought it just in case. I like this one. It's nice and shiny and aluminum, <laughs> and the seals feel good. So I might even have these seals to replace it with. I'll look and see. But physically, it's fine. 
I did get another, I got a couple low reverse servos just because they're still soft. But you know what, if I got them and I, I can get them, I'll put them in. If not, it goes back the way it is. I got some Teflon rings for the pump. That's where we're at. Stay tuned for the rest of the story. Gotta go read Water Horse with the kids for bedtime story. Ready for another racing C4 rebuild.